its event time. A bit over a year ago, I did a full walkthrough series on the RB Battles Season 3 event. The viewership in question? Look, I know it wasn't the greatest, but it was honest work, okay? The point is, I'm no stranger when it comes to Roblox events. If there's an active Roblox event going on, chances are I'm gonna do the entire thing. So when there was rumors of a new Roblox event after over a year of waiting, I was stoked! Roblox had discontinued egg hunts back since early 2020, and the closest thing we had to a proper egg hunt was Metaverse Champions. There was speculation of an egg hunt 2024, people were theorizing what games were gonna be included because of the placeholder items. Even David Bazuki himself was teasing this event. Eventually though, the name was confirmed. The Hunt First Edition. One of seemingly many Roblox events to come in the future. More and more games were confirmed to be joining until we are eventually where we are now. However, what seemed like my dream turned into my 20-hour nightmares I scrambled to collect all of the badges. How many did I have to collect? Well, to answer that, first we're gonna have to start all the way at the beginning. Around an hour and 20 minutes before the hunt was officially supposed to begin, I saw a message saying that apparently one of the games had released their badge early. So I got to work and the journey began. Before we begin, however, I'd like to take a moment to explain how this video is going to work. First, I'm going to show you the game I'm playing, its mission, and then after I talk about it, I'm going to rate it 1 out of 10. Got that? Alright, let's begin. First up on the list is Brookhaven. The uh, premise of this one's pretty simple. Once you start the hunt, 20 random eggs will spawn around the map. I'm not sure if they're in preset locations or not, but they probably are. Thankfully, you can spawn a vehicle to speed up the process, which I wasn't really aware of until later. The hunt is actually compressed in a small area in the map, which I like. You don't have to go all around the entire game in order to find these eggs. It was fine enough, really. I give it a 6 out of 10. Gets the job done and it was slightly enjoyable. Next up on the list is Twilight Daycare. The mission here is to complete 5 child tasks. I'm unsure if this applies to the child themselves doing the task, or both the adult and the child getting credit for doing a task together. However, either way, I was a child and I got the needs done and got the badge. This one wasn't really that interesting. It did stuff that you would normally do in the actual game, and there was nothing really exclusive to the hunt itself. Plus, as a child, you could literally just AFK the entire thing and get the badge. You just need to have, like, a friend or a stranger do it. Not really that intuitive in general. I give it a 4 out of 10. Maybe next time, just try and do something original. Next up is Gunfight Arena! Yeah, really nice transition there. The goal this time around is to collect 10 of 5 different types of items. The way you get these items is through kills, whether they're through your own or through someone else's. Once you get them, they're in your collection. In my opinion, this is like a pretty nice fighting game. Yeah, like it doesn't really fit in with theming to the hunt, but at the same time, it's enjoyable and actually got me a bit invested. Not every challenge has to be focused around theming, and this one, for me, was at least pretty enjoyable. At least it's a breath of fresh air for my usual type of games. 7 out of 10, it was pretty good, I guess. The next game I tried out is Doors, one of the most popular horror games on Roblox. This, surprisingly, is the one that I see people have trouble with the most, and that's completely understandable. Doors is a hard survival game about trial and error, figuring out which each of the monsters do and how to deal with them. I myself didn't get through on the first try either. I had to find a team that knew what they were doing and follow them all the way till the end, and I even used a revive along the way, which you can only use one of per run. 
This, in my opinion, is what events should do. Something exclusive to an event or something big for an event. The only thing that would stop me from giving this a 10 is if it had more hunt theming, but even then, this is doors, not everything needs to be about the hunt. I just have a slight suspicion that this wasn't made with the hunt in mind, or maybe it was made with one of the prompts in mind, but it doesn't really show it too much. Regardless of which it is, I'm happy to give this one a 9 out of 10, one of the better ones in this event. Bike of Hell is next, and sadly I forgot to record actual gameplay of the event stage. However, I did record normal footage of the game, so there's that. This game is exactly what it sounds, a Tower of Hell themed around biking, biking, and more biking. This game is a nightmare to be free to play on. It is just not very f friendly at all with people who don't pay. I had to buy a VIP bike and a gravity coil in order to do this. Very greedy indeed. The stage itself was fine, it was hunt themed of course, it had core blocks and stuff and blue atmosphere, which I did like. It's just that the game itself wasn't very enjoyable at all. 5 out of 10, not the best but not unbearably bad either. Weapon Fighting Simulator is fine at best, greedy at worst. Its quests involve, you know, stuff like getting specific drops from enemies, defeating a certain amount of enemies, and, you know, just opening eggs with a currency you can buy with Robux. Definitely not pay to win here. It didn't take me too long, but it was pretty tedious and not at all related to the hunt. Just go ahead and hook yourself to the game or whatever. I liked some of the visuals, but it just, like... It just wasn't that good at all. 4 out of 10, not quite original with what it does, but at least the visuals were decent. Pet Simulator 9- <laughs> Wait, what? I, uh, got the badge? What? I mean, okay, I guess? Next up was My Restaurant. Now, I had played this game a while ago, so I had all the equipment that I needed. It's just that since I recently had prestiged, I had lost all of my staff, so I did have to sit down and AFK a bit. However, I did have a lot of the gear needed. It was literally just AFK simulator. So, while the modeling was good, yeah, it, it's just the gameplay isn't there at all, and that makes up, like, 90% of it, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and give this one a 3 out of 10, sorry I guess. The third and final big games experience in this event, seriously, how the hell did they get so many in here, is Big Paintball 2, another shooter game. Similar to Gunfight Arena, your objective is to get 50 kills, except you can kill them in three different ways. The minigun with fast firing but low accuracy, the rifle with medium accuracy and speed, and finally the sniper with pinpoint accuracy but very slow speed. I mainly went with the minigun for this one, and they don't really give any differences in terms of skins, it's just they look cool. This one I feel was slightly worse than Gunfight Arena though, primarily because like, you know, it's just, the map design just makes it so, like, you can instantly just die, I guess. As in, with Gunfight Arena, you actually have a health system instead of just instantly dropping dead whenever one bullet hits you. For those reasons, I'm probably going to give this one a 5 out of 10. It wasn't awful, but again, the, the theming isn't there and it's just a normal gameplay mechanic. Adopt Me's was fine enough, you had to go back to different events in the game because apparently Roblox gave them the prompt time travel. This is actually quite unique, usually when events disappear from a game, they're usually just gone forever, but in this case they actually reuse the map. And while I'm generally not for reusing content, I feel like this is a good use for it. For each of the three time periods, there's one objective. The first one has you collect crabs. The second one is that one Price is Right minigame. And the third one is Minefield from Pet Simulator 99, except when this was made, Pet Simulator 99 wasn't made. Not to mention here, you actually tell which tiles are fall through. 
all in all pretty unique and fits the theming well, so I'm going ahead and give this a 7 out of 10. It was fine enough, I guess. I don't really have any opinions about Restaurant Tycoon 2. All of my opinions for my restaurants persist with this game. Either way, it's just AFK and wait until one customer just spits out eggs and then collects them so that you can get those sweet, sweet hunt points. At least this time you actually have to walk over to collect the eggs, plus they're actually Easter themed items, both of which bump my review of this to a 5 out of 10. Not very good, not very bad, just eh. Don't worry though, because the really bad ones will come down later. Down later is now- OH GOD SKIBBITY TOILET! Welcome to Toilet Tower Defense, the tower defense about skibbity toilet! Five eggs in three different areas, the lobby, the main game, and the trading hub. Some are hidden well, but the ones that require you to be in-game actually require you to join multiple times, which I don't really like. It's kind of annoying having to leave the game, then join back in order to get certain eggs. It was decent, I can't believe I'm saying this about Skibbity Toilet, but it was just decent. Not enjoyable, but like, it, it wasn't bad per se. I'm going to say this as unbiased as possible, 6 out of 10, okay? Blade Ball was up and now it's just get a few statistics in a few games. Blade Ball itself is like kind of enjoyable, I can see the appeal for it. I only played it a bit and have never played it beforehand, but I, I guess it's like fine. It was actually slightly addicting, which I can see where the, you know, gambling part of it comes in with all the different skins and abilities. All in all, uh, it's just pretty good. It was better than a few of them, I guess. I don't really have that much to say about the game, considering how there's no unique thing for the hunt. 6 out of 10, they didn't really try too hard, but the game itself they did. And just like that, the hunt had begun. Yes, all of that was before it officially began. Now then, we've gone this entire time without seeing our end goal for this. We've just been looking at question marks. So, I mean, I guess let's just see how many we have to get. 95?! You're telling me, out of the 100 games that participated in this, I have to do 95 of them?! Whoever decides to do that has to be insane! While at first Death Ball just seemed to be like a clone of Blade Ball, I found that its quest was actually really nice. They made a whole core blocks boss fight for this, which I love. The gameplay was the same as Blade Ball, in which, while that was kinda cheap because this game was inspired by Blade Ball, I, did, I do still really like the mechanics in this one. Especially since this is also mixed with an anime game and I got the Luffy one. 8 out of 10, I liked the gameplay, theming, and the boss fight. Barry's prison runtime, and after gracing us with the presence of Skibbity Barry, we move on to our challenge. 10 donuts are scattered around the obby. If you don't find them all, too bad. Replay the entire thing. Sorry. By the end, it definitely felt like I was missing a few, but apparently I wasn't, and I got all of them. First try. They're not really that hidden, because again, this entire thing is for children. But at the same time, like, yeah, it, it can be a bit tricky, like, ev slightly tricky. Not really that much theming related to the hunt besides that. Th this just sounds like it was going to be a planned event regardless. 5 out of 10, the obby was kind of bland, although I did like the theming, but the gameplay was just the same as it was normally. Tower Defense Simulator was great. It had the core blocks theme, it had the time travel theme, and it did everything right. The one bad thing I have about this game is that, you know, it's a tower defense game, and, like, it's not really that much active in general. Like, you do play stuff, but it's mainly just idling around a bit, which, for a tower defense game, might be good to some people, but for me, it's just not my type too much. 
Either way though, I love the theming from the skybox to how the map gradually decays over time. I wish some of these games were more like this. 9 out of 10. Great work, Tower Defense Simulator developers. I hope you all can outdo yourselves next year! I hate the Livtopia quest. You wanna know what you gotta do? Okay then! Step one is to grab a frozen safe so you can melt it in water and do nothing for three minutes. Then you go to your house and five times in a row do nothing for a minute and then play a crappy match mini game. What's the point of the breaks for premium payouts? This is your one chance, your one shot at having popularity, and you use it with an AFK simulator? The one thing that's stopping me from giving this a 1 out of 10 is the match minigame, but that's it. 2 out of 10, this entire practice just disgusts me in general. Arm Wrestle Simulator was, like, decent. It's mainly just, like, a copy-paste simulator, yeah, I mean, like, at least it kinda looks pretty good, which is the thing stopping me from giving it a low score, but at the same time, it wasn't the greatest either. It was mainly just break a few breakables, get strength, find keys, it was decent, kinda. 5 out of 10, because, like, while I did like the decorations, it just seemed like another event thing. Metro Life's quest sucked! Okay, yeah, the atmosphere was pretty good, but the balloon you need to go and go so damn slow! That's the only reason of this quest length, because you just go so slow! This is literally just a whole W simulator, make the balloon faster! 1 out of 10, this was absolutely inexcusable from the developers here. Oh, absolutely awful. What's up? What's going on? How are you doing on this fine day, my brother? Car dealership tycoon didn't really have that much of an enjoyable quest in general, really. It was just mid. With it being a driving game, yeah, the controls are kinda slippery considering how you're in, you know, car controls, but that's the same for every car game. The game isn't bad, it's just the quest itself wasn't really enjoyable too much. Honestly, I'd prefer if you just do some, like, race or something on an exclusive course, but I highly doubt that this kind of game would do something like that. Since I had to look for quite a while, I'm gonna give this one a 4 out of 10. Maybe next time, try and copy what Brookhaven did and just put your eggs in a small area instead of having them scattered across the map. Oh look, another driving game, how fun! I find this one better than the last though, as the controls just feel better, you get to go a lot faster, plus you don't need to find every single egg as they actually spawn, not having to have preset locations that you have to go find, you just collect them as you drive. The racetrack I had to go on did feel a tiny bit bland though. All in all though, I found this at least slightly enjoyable, which is a compliment when it comes to the hunt. 6 out of 10, not the greatest event ever, but still better than nothing. In spray paint, a thief stole some old guy's spray can, so you gotta get it back from him. Now, the first part of this little hunt thing is you have to actually draw a portrait of the thief. Now, the game actually can't detect if you're drawing the thief or not, so you just have to draw for a bit before just talking to him and he'll, I guess, tell you where they are? Well, actually, he doesn't, because apparently, he lost the cans to some stray dogs! So, you gotta go find all nine of the cans. Gameplay-wise, this was, like, fine, I, I mean, I guess? Not too good, not too bad, which is why I'm exactly giving this a 6 out of 10. 
I mean, they they gave it their all, I guess. I did not like the Elemental Powers Tycoon quest. This was literally just doing the Tycoon. I've heard that it takes 45 minutes for some people, and I had to spend Robux on it. What was the goal here? Premium payouts or Robux players? Either way, it's just awful. The one redeeming quality is that I became Sans Undertale. That's it. 2 out of 10. Try actually making a good thing next time. The challenge for Survive the Killer wasn't really that interesting either. You had to go ahead and pick up an energy core hidden around the map and then survive with it. One good thing is that it's not restricted to one player. Every survivor can get it, it's just that you gotta survive with it. I got my friend Icy to be killer and then just AFK the entire round so I survived with it. I tried doing it in a public server, however I did not want to try that. But yeah, shout out to them. 4 out of 10. You tried, but I just don't think this is my thing. Dragon Adventures was kinda cool. You went to a volcano area and then you gotta beat up these shadow demon things. And then once you do, you bring the egg right back over to Mama Dragon. The controls luckily were pretty easy to understand. Plus, even with starter gear, it wasn't really too bad. I give this one a 5 out of 10. It was pretty good for what it was worth. Fruit Battlegrounds was really just confusing in general. The game gives you zero indication of what you had to do. I had zero idea what I needed to get done, however I'd seen a rumor that was like a 15% chance when you killed somebody, so I spent like 30 minutes just killing the same person only to realize that that was a lie. And when I did find a guide, it turned out the person was actually advertising a crypto miner. I then finally realized I needed to double kill, but one problem, everyone else in the server was way too overleveled. I eventually got one guy down and then killed my friend and finally got the badge. 3 out of 10, at least tell the player what you need to do. Here we have Legends of Speed, a game that I used to play- oh wait, I uh, got the badge. Oh come on, again?! Bayside High School did not do something I expected for a roleplay game. They recreated Guitar Hero in Roblox. Or Friday Night Funkin', or Osu Mania, or any 4-key rhythm game. Either way, they put a rhythm game in Roblox, and I like it. It fits time travel well, it's just good in general, and it's short and sweet. It's not absolute perfection in my opinion, but it's one of the best ones that I've seen. 9 out of 10. Great work, developers. Emergency Response Liberty County was just okay at best. It was like a riddle hunt, which could easily just be solved by looking up a guide. Plus, you could just get hints immediately and go ahead and, you know, find where it is. In my opinion, this was just mess, so I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. I mean, it was fine. It's check-in time. Looks like that we have 30 badges so far. Metro Life was definitely the worst one I've played so far. It is literally just holding a button. The balloon also went like one mile per hour too. The best one I've played was probably Doors. Yes, it's really challenging, but that's kind of the point. Difficulty doesn't make a game good or bad if it's fair. With that being said, why are, were most of the games just mediocre? I believe that because of the three week time period that the developers had to work with, the quality control just wasn't there, made even worse by the fact that probably not that many developers wanted to do it and the ones that did were probably engagement farmers. We can't make an opinion too early though. With that being out of the way though, we got our staffs. We're 30 out of 95 there, oh god we are not even a third of the way through. The course design on Wild Horse Islands did kind of hurt my eyes a little bit. It is quite saturated indeed. This was just kind of painful to get through considering how the horse just moves pretty slow in general. Plus it's not really that long, like at all, really. 
To me, it was just boring. And when your only goal is to have an entertaining experience during the hunt, you don't want to be boring. Being boring is how you end up with a 4 out of 10, which is exactly what I'm going to give this game. Mega Mansion Tycoon was just lazy in general because the only thing that you do to complete the quest is to just progress in the Tycoon, which either requires you to AFK for a long time or for you to spend Robux. At the very least, the particles at the end were cool, which is the only reason why I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10. Club Roblox's quest was actually surprisingly well made. You'd think that this kind of game would just have a generic egg hunt, but I was actually pleasantly surprised. It had its own secret underground facility with puzzles you needed to solve in an obstacle course. I did all of this with a baby in my hand, by the way. Pretty, uh, <laughs> unique way to do things. 8 out of 10. You did pretty good on this one. How in the ever-living f*** did this get past quality control? You literally do nothing for 15 minutes! They couldn't even bother to get the English version of the logo! This singular game manages to insult every other game that participated in this event. I am too stunned to say anything about this game. This is going to be probably the one and only time I am going to give a game a 0 out of 10. Screw you. <sighs> maybe I uh, got a bit too heated there, maybe. Regardless, that attempt, if you can even call it that, at having a game for the hunt was miserable. Maybe the next game will calm me down a little bit. No. Th this can't be. As you would expect, this is just another team up with someone, get through the game together, yada yada yada. Nothing we hadn't seen before, it's just another game trying to capitalize off it. Of all the games to include in the hunt, this one? Well, I suppose I have to. Welcome to Carry a Friend, the game where you carry a friend. Now, let me just go ahead and list off the positives first. It's well coded, they have kinda good wire minigames, and I like the stud aesthetic. Now, what about the bad stuff? Robux items to kill everyone, putting items in your hotbar that don't work without Robux, and that when you fall in the void, you have to restart the entire thing. Like, look on the left, there is a kill all button. It also costs 100 Robux to skip a stage. Oh, but at least you get a free UGC after inviting your entire friends list! This game sucks, but it is not nearly on the level of Snowboard Obby, so I'm just going to go ahead and give this a 3 out of 10. Consider yourself spared. From going from one greedy game to another, Pull a Sword is not any better. I had to sit an AFK for 30 minutes grinding strength for this game. And no, none of the Robux pets work in this event world, despite it being constantly advertised to you. Oh yeah, and not to mention the definitely unlicensed characters in this. Not really good for PR to have a bootleg Goku in one of the games for your big event. Look, I know you have 100 games participating, but you gotta have some quality control. 3 out of 10 as well. This was bad, but like, around the same as the other one. Natural Disaster Survival was meh. It's a good game, but the quest was kinda lackluster. In every match, 3 clocks spawn. However, only 3 players per match can pick up a clock, and if you don't get one, sorry, you're gonna have to wait till the next one. I myself didn't have too much of an issue when completing this, however I can imagine that someone with high ping would have a pretty bad time trying to get all of them. Again, the game is basically a timeless classic, haha <laughs> get it because clocks. But this just seemed, eh, just meh. 4 out of 10, at least it was better than the other ones we've seen. Funky Friday! Oh god, it's Game Fam. 
Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and grade this solely because of the fact it's game fam, but I'm just gonna grade this fairly. Half of the songs either sound like they weren't made for Friday Night Funkin', or that they were a Friday Night Funkin' song from 2021. I'm not too big of a rhythm guy, but then again, this was already similar to that one high school game that we played earlier. I do like the background, too. 6 out of 10, I can tell that they put at least some effort into this. Strongman Simulator actually kinda surprised me with his quest, because I thought it was just going to be another generic event simulator. No, 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 no. For this one, you actually have to complete basically a Rage Game tier dragging puzzle. Three of them to be specific, however, you get checkpoints after each one. It did, like, feel frustrating, however, I didn't really experience any rage from it. It just, like, felt that I was just- the physics gonna screw me over and I was gonna have to restart. Either way, I find this kinda unique, better than Funky Friday, but not enough to give it a 7, so I'm going ahead and going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. Probably one of the only half ratings I'll give. Treasure Hunt Simulator's quest was just bad. Being a digging simulator kinda game, you gotta find three different chests. I played this game a lot a few years back, however, I can imagine that it would be even worse of a time for someone who didn't even play at all. For me, this was literally just an AFK simulator. And it's actually a hold click simulator for someone who doesn't have the black hole that costs a few thousand robux. I can't believe I'm saying this for a game this innocent, but I'm going to give this a 2 out of 10. Ew. Warning, scary alert. Ninja Legend, surely there's something for this. Alright, maybe Muscle Legends will do better. Okay, but in all seriousness, the ones that require you to do an objective that you might have already had are just lazy. Oh yeah, also, before we continue... You know what to do. Oh good, one that I haven't even played yet. In Lumberjack Simulator, your goal is to- wait, 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 hang on a moment. This is just the same game as Polo Sword! Like, actually, the exact same game, down to the GUIs! And it also took 20 minutes to complete, what is happening? Look, I get if you couldn't do much, I know, it's hard to be on a three week time limit, but copying your game and just putting a different quest in a different game, why? Someone else would have killed to have your spot, you know, and you just waste it on another copy-paste AFK simulator? No, I'm not even going to give you the grace of a 2 out of 10. 1 out of 10 for you. Need More Friends was like kinda cool, I guess. It had done its own thing, which I like. I always like having a unique thing in Roblox events. But all in all, it just felt like an obby, felt like a maze, etc. Not enough for a 7, so I'm probably going to give it a 6 out of 10. Definitely not the worst thing that we've seen so far, but not the best. Sonic Speed Simulator just felt tedious. Your mission is to go to like Eggman's base or whatever and find 100 time shards. The problem is, unlike every single other collectible in the game, you have to activate a proximity prompt to collect them. Now, I'm like 95% sure that this was made to combat exploiters, but at the same time, like, why? It's just so annoying having to s completely stop in order to collect a collectible. And the fact that you gotta do this 100 times just annoys me. 4 out of 10, it wasn't like the absolute worst thing ever because of the atmosphere. I can tell that they really did try with Astro Renaissance, the art direction is amazing in my opinion, it's just that this feels more like an art showcase than having actual gameplay. Don't get me wrong, this game looks cool, it's just that like, the obbies just feel bland. There was also a boss fight at the end, however the gameplay itself was pretty lackluster. 
It had all the things lined up for a perfect hunt of it, and however, the execution was just slightly flawed. 7 out of 10, I can tell that they did really try with this one. Military Tycoon was just tedious to get through. Your goal is to get 20 crates scattered across the map, except they expect you to defend yourself against armed guards with underleveled gear. Did I mention that if your car's HP runs out, you EXPLODE? You can't spawn cars outside of your base either, so if your car breaks down, too bad. You either have to walk or respawn. The fact that the crates are so far out is just kind of annoying considering how you basically always have to at least tank a few hits, either that or have to take out the guards with your under-equipped weapon. Well, I mean, the weapon was fine, it's just they always got at least some hits in on the car. The only way to get more HP on the car is either by paying Robux or just by progressing in the Tycoon. Yeah, I'm just gonna give this a 4 out of 10 just straight up. I know I've been given that a lot, but still. Cheese Tower Defense had a pretty cool Easter event. It works fine enough, but in the end of the day, it's still just AFK for a lot of it since it's a tower defense game. 6 out of 10, it's, I mean, good for what it's worth. And now we are officially halfway through the hunt. Let's take a break for a bit. Wait a minute, I'm number 24 in the entire event right now? I mean, I know I've been doing all of these non-stop, but I didn't think I was good enough to be in the top 25. Nevertheless, before we move on to the latter half, let's talk about some of the games real quick. It seems that all of the events we've seen are either get a statistic, progress a certain amount in the game, or do a special event quest. I've also noticed a strong time travel theme in some of the games. My prediction is that Roblox gave the developers a prompt of either time travel, portals, or core blocks. The quality control just doesn't seem to be there considering how we've been through Snowboard Obby and stuff, alongside Arm Wrestling Simulator and Lumberjack Simulator basically being the same game that got through twice. I think the low development time is what caused all of these games to just be mediocre. Three weeks in general is not a lot, and that's proved more and more evident by the previous games that we've played. This all just feels very new for Roblox, a new type of event, kind of like Metaverse Champions, but different. All of these games at once just feels overwhelming considering how I just like to get all of it done at once. With that being said, we're done with the first half, so let's move on to the next. <laughs> no, not again, not again, I'm not STRONG ENOUGH! It was actually not that bad. One minigame and a Half-Life reference later... Morning, Battler. Rise and shine. You got to choose between Rat Battle and Rap Battle. I chose Rap Battle, completely expecting to go into Friday Night Funkin', however instead I was met with Parappa. Being RB Battles and the fact that the developers are seriously goaded, I like this one. I heard that the alternative path is like a PvP against rats in a sewer. I'm not sure how good that one is, however, I'm going to rate this one an 8 out of 10. Continue being awesome. Collect All Pets is a unique simulator where eggs are the collectibles. Well, coins too, but yeah, you get the point. This game is about finding as many pets as possible, whether through eggs or through fusion. Nevertheless, this is still a milestone game that actually did require me to spend a bit of Robux, I believe. It's still a simulator, pretty annoying to get through too, so I'm going ahead and give this one a 5 out of 10. Tsunami game just claims to be be crushed by a speeding wall mixed with red light green light, and to be honest, I don't really see where the red light green light part comes into it, because this game just literally shares all of the same mechanics with be crushed by a speeding wall. And yeah, being hit by the wall resets all your progress. And yeah, people can summon it whenever they like. You basically need to get to the end and then do a walking simulator in order to complete the event. It was like kinda interesting to get through up until this point, so I'm going ahead and be nice and give it a 4 out of 10. Maybe something after the UFO would be good, or maybe just decrease the walk time. War Tycoon's Quest just seems like Military Tycoon's Quest, but worse. 
Now, all of the items are in preset locations, so you're gonna have to look for them. Also, the region that you're finding them in is now densely packed with players, so you're gonna have people shooting at you unless you tell them that you're friendly. Also, I didn't easily get a jeep, I had to spend robux to get it, so... N bad. Yeah, I didn't really like this one considering how long it took me to get them, and considering how this is just military tycoon but worse, I'm going ahead and give this one a 3 out of 10. Not very good. My Hello Kitty Cafe plays the exact same as my restaurant, and because I share the same feelings between the two, I'm just going to skip the monologue and give this one a 3 out of 10. Break-In 2 is probably one of the most unique story games I've seen, with you actually having to upgrade your stats by doing things, and then having to earn money by fighting an infinite amount of bad guys. I'd love to give this a high score, but the quest just wasn't good. Yeah, the gameplay was fine, but all you had to do was just survive up until the third wave. And if you have tons of other people in your server, that means you can just AFK until you do get it. I'm really hesitant about this score, but I'm just going to say 5 out of 10. The game was in the right place, it's just the quest wasn't really that good. Catalog Avatar Creator was actually really nice considering how it had a semi-retro aesthetic with all of its GUIs and stuff. This game either had you choose between Team Deathmatch or Capture the Flag, with four different teams based on avatar packages that you could play as. This is a PvP game, either you're really good at it and you win, or you're really bad at it and you lose. But it's not all that, because apparently this game's player base loves letting overseers win. So it's basically a race to see who selects the overseer team first and who wins. Then again, that's not Catalog Avatar's creator's fault. But besides that, it was just a pretty generic PvP game. It's still solid, but it's just kind of not original, I guess? I'm not gonna take away too much for that though, which is why I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. Pretty good. Spongebob Simulator just smells bad. Another game owned by GameFam and another lazy progression quest. The fact that this took 30 minutes did not surprise me, but I did it anyway. This was basically Pet Simulator, but Spongebob and worse. Plus, with just a hint of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles everywhere. Since this entire thing was literally just AFK Simulator, at least the visuals were good, but I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 10 either way. All-Star Tower Defense was just another tower defense, except they couldn't even bother to get an event world for it, so they just reused the first level. All you really do is just survive until the last wave, in which a golden bunny spawns and then you take it out. They didn't even try getting a good quest out, so I'm giving this a 4 out of 10. Just try and make at least something next year. World Zero was pretty tedious too. It was just kill enemies and just pray that you get egg drops because they're super rare, I guess. Not really that much to say other than the visuals are pretty good, so I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a 4 out of 10, yay! Car Crushers 2 is a satisfying game where you absolutely obliterate cars using various different doohickeys and mechanisms. The hunt quest this time around was simply to complete the tutorial. Like actually, they just straight up say it's the tutorial that you have to complete. I would give this like a low score because of the severe laziness with this, however, I think that the game is actually somewhat decent, so I'm going ahead and give it a 5 out of 10 because it works well. War Machines was basically Iron Man Simulator, where you basically had to kill 60 different rebels. I like the animations and the design pretty well, but the combat just feels a bit iffy, at least for the starter suit. Plus 60 just felt like a bit much, even though that there are a lot of enemies crowded around specific locations, and it literally tells you where they are. It's just that a lot of people are competing for them. I'm not really sure what else to say, so I'm just going to give it the exact same score I did with the last game and give it a 5 out of 10. <laughs> SCP Roleplay actually had a unique event, although a bit flawed. 
Number one, there was no punishment for dying, so you're basically guaranteed a win if you last long enough. And number two, after a while, the waypoints just go away, meaning you don't know where the electrical boxes are, so you're just spent with minutes trying to find out where they are. And that's a little bit frustrating when you are constantly flooded with enemies to kill. This had potential, and I like the dedication where this is, but it's just like, kinda decent at best. 6 out of 10, I like the fact that there's actually something new. For Please Donate, I actually really liked this one. It was a combination of a pipe puzzle along with a mining simulator. The first part of the whole event thing is when you try and solve these pipe puzzles that you are given a time limit for. I assume that if the time limit runs out, you just restart, but I guess it's fine with the time limit you're given. It was probably made for children. Once you do that, it's off to the diamond mines for you, buddy! You're a slave now! No, but seriously, like, this is, like, fine. Not really that great gameplay, but hey, they did the best they could for a diamond mining game. I would give this a higher score, but due to the tediosity of the diamond mining game, I'm giving this a 7 out of 10. They still did a really good job. Life Together was actually quite creative with its event. You have to actually take photos of the eggs with one of the apps that you have. I'm actually quite surprised on how they did manage to do this, but it's pretty good for what it's worth. I just wish that the eggs weren't all in the park. If they were, like, better spaced out, then maybe I would give it a higher score, but I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for all of this. Barry Avenue felt more like a sponsorship than the actual event. This company called, like, Elf Up is sponsoring it, and while we've seen this company before, it's just blatant that it's everywhere now. The quest box permanently has the company logo above it. Plus, literally all you do is make a bowl of fruit. For some reason, it's a beauty company that's sponsoring this, in which I have no idea what this has to do with making a fruit bowl, but all I do know is that this is something you can do in the main game. 4 out of 10, maybe make like a metaverse meal next time or something. Royal High's Quest actually felt like a Mario Party minigame. Luckily, you don't need to actually win, which would have made this quest a lot worse. All you need to do is collect 50 eggs. This one was surprisingly pretty fun with all the random events that happened, and was a neat little distraction from all of the horrors that the rest of the event had. I like this one a bit. 7 out of 10. I wish it had more stuff, though. Warrior Cats actually had a proper egg hunt that you needed to do. Albeit pretty short if you just want the badge, however it's more expansive if you actually want the stuff in the game. It was kind of easy for me considering how two of the ones spawn directly where you spawn. It's kind of RNG based, kind of not. The other one I found in a waterfall. I like the dedication they had for specifically making an event world for the Easter event, so I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Other games should look up to this one. Dungeon Quest had pretty generic statistic quests that could basically be completed in two runs. I had played the game prior, so I could basically vaporize any enemy in front of me besides the boss, which I could take out in like 10 hits. I don't really have much else to say, it's a dungeon game where you kill enemies. Not really that interesting. 4 out of 10, because it's pretty lazy, honestly. I admire the dedication of Maple Hospital for trying to have a unique event, however, it's just not very good in general. A lot of it is just walking, doing one thing, and then walking again, not very interesting. Especially since the quest was broken in public servers and I had to restart it. The big climax boss battle at the end wasn't really interesting either, it was literally just hold a button, really. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10 as a consolation prize. Y you did decent. Drive World's quest is to go to the junkyard and back 10 different times. Your vehicle is also slower than usual with the back thing that you have, which is very fun. Unless, of course, you spend Robux so your car goes faster. It doesn't directly advertise this to you, but this was still just quite painful. It did feel fun seeing all of the destruction around me while I was breaking down the fences to get back to the junkyard. 
3 out of 10. It was painful, but not extremely painful. Dress to impress was just boring at best. Your goal is to collect 20 bunnies in two consecutive rounds, meaning if you don't get it on the second one, you're gonna have to restart the first one again. Made even more boring by the fact that sometimes the bunnies go into the VIP room, which you have to spend Robux to get. A lot of this was just walking around and pressing a proximity prompt simulator. I mean, at least it was better than having the bunnies be stationary and randomly spawning. 4 out of 10, I wish it could have just been some hunt-themed event theme, kinda. And here we are at the hub again, with only 25 games remaining. It seems I've moved much further up the leaderboards, with me now being 16th place in the entire event! However, I'm probably not going to keep that leaderboard position. It was 3 a.m. at the time, and I needed to go to sleep badly. Let's talk a bit more before going into the final 25, however. My points that I've made earlier have only been solidified. All of the events just feel rushed. To live up to the standards of having a massive event for your game with tons of eyes on you in only three weeks is just not enough time. Give your developers at least like a three months notice to make actually something worthwhile. And maybe to prevent the problem of being overwhelmed, you should limit the amount of games that can join. I would definitely like this whole thing more if we only had to do 30, but all of the quests were three times longer. The event probably would have been much better and I wouldn't have given out so many low ratings if it weren't for the fact that they were only given such little time to do so. We're almost done, however. We just gotta get through a few more, and then we can finally put this event to rest. Let's do this! Bring it on! Bed Wars had a good event, although it did feel a little bit short for what you had to do for the badge. They made an entire new game mode, Egg Hunt. Your mission is to grab eggs around the map, then bring them back to your base without dying, although you also get a speed boost that you can pick up. It can be a bit annoying when someone you're trying to kill gets a speed boost or the other way around. However, you don't need to win, you just need to bring 15 back to your base. It was pretty good, although I wish it could have been longer, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a 7 out of 10. Oh great, another pay to win cash grab game! The Core Blocks map, which you need for the hunt, only spawns one out of eight times! Apparently you just randomly go back in time too, so it's just taking the prompts that Roblox gave them and rolling with it in a kind of lazy way. The decoration is lackluster, you can revive anytime you want for Robux, it takes a while to even get to the event in the first place. The only good thing is that it was ever so slightly fun. That's the only credit I'm giving this game. 2 out of 10. Not good at all. Lumber Tycoon 2 is more of a walking simulator than anything. Go to the cave, chop down a tree, get the egg, and go. No statistics, no nothing. Just get the egg, leave, and you're done. 3 out of 10. Meh. Ultimate Football literally just let you server hop to servers that almost had quarters done. Otherwise, they take stupidly long amounts of time. The game looked well designed, however forcing a player to do multiple quarters of a match, unless you just server hop, is just very bad considering how you can skip the entire thing. I'm also giving this one a 3 out of 10 considering how much of an oversight from the developers this was. Arsenal tried really hard for their quest, and it paid off. This one has you go on an entire adventure to breach a facility, to bring down a helicopter, and to foil some bad guy's plans. This is one of the best ones in the event. It was still a shooter game, which I'm not really good at, but that's okay, because I don't need to be good at things in order for me to rate them high. It took me a few attempts, but I can obviously see the amount of effort here, which is why I am happy to give this game a 9 out of 10. Greenville was a slog to get through. You had to go ahead and go to these waypoints, except every time you click the Find Waypoint button, it only spawns for a few seconds. Plus, it took me 20 minutes to get all of this done. Not to mention I frequently crashed my car and stuff. 
Do they really expect you to find all of this without waypoints? I would have enjoyed this more if the map wasn't so spaced out and it took you so long to get to places. The whole thing would have been a lot better if it wasn't as spaced out, so I'm giving this a free 10. At least it has mini games. Anime Dimensions looked good, but just the quest was lazy. All you had to do was complete two dimensions by any means necessary, whether it be through carrying or by doing it yourself. At level 1, the enemies are just stupidly overpowered for you, even at the first level. Then again, there is no punishment for dying. However, there is a time limit that you have to get through. The time limit is extremely forgiving, so don't worry too much about that. I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10 considering how they really didn't even try with making a unique thing for the hunt. Creatures of Sonario was a survival game where you had to do a few tasks in a few different worlds and basically just survive and hope to not. Without grow tokens, growing a creature can take upwards of 20 or more minutes, so I'm giving this a 3 out of 10 just for the fact that you have to wait for so long basically doing nothing and hoping you survive. Undead Defense Tycoon is literally just grab a gun and shoot zombies in the woods simulator. Not much else to say other than it's also a tycoon and that yellow zombies spawn more regular egg zombies. 5 out of 10, the whole thing was just fine enough. Football Fusion 2's quest literally took less than a minute. All you gotta do is attempt to catch and make a tackle. 2 out of 10, you barely made me do anything. Alright campers, your challenge is the hunt! Your task is to complete 95 Roblox games! The winning team will receive golden crowns for each team member, while the losing teams will be sending someone home tonight! Total Roblox Drama is more of a social manipulation game than a challenge game. Your only goal is to convince your other team members not to vote you off. That requires being as nice as possible and finding a very valid reason to vote someone else off. With that same reason, convincing everyone else on your team that you were in the right. Convincing that you are such a good team member that people would sacrifice themselves so that you would stay in the game. I was on a team that got down to two people before the merge, so I really had to apply this tactic. Nevertheless, I survived. This was actually a really fun thing to do, but it was kind of lazy considering how there was no unique thing for the hunt, so I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Project Smash is just wait 5 minutes for an egg to spawn, and only one person can get it per server. The good news is that you can also do this in private servers, so it isn't as bad, but it's still 5 minutes of waiting. Getting some kills would probably be nice, since it's a fighting game, but no, you just had to make it so that an egg spawns. 2 out of 10, like, at least do something slightly different. Redcliffe City is just an essentially worse version of the Brookhaven quest. You have to collect four different parts of like an emblem kind of thing, except they provide waypoints to all four of them so it's incredibly boring where you, because you know where you need to go. And while sure, in the past I've criticized these types of games for not having waypoints, this kind of map is so condensed that at this point I just rather have a bunch of eggs everywhere instead of having four preset location eggs at specific locations. Waypoints would make sense if there were more, but there are only just four of them. I'm giving this a 4 out of 10. I mean, like, it just doesn't feel too good to me. Super League Soccer just had you play two matches. You don't have to win them, you just have to play in two. Technically, you could just AFK till it's over, but number one, people would get mad at you, and number two, it's just funner to actually play the game. It's actually a pretty fleshed out Roblox soccer game, which I like, and yes, I did win both times. And while I did have kind of fun with the game, it just felt a bit bland with the quest. Just the generic do two matches kind of stuff wasn't really anything too interesting. I'm giving it the one point fun pity point, so I'm giving this a 5 out of 10. Combat Warriors is so graphic that I'm gonna have to heavily censor this clip for YouTube so that I don't get striking down by the demonetization gods. But this is a gory fighting game. Not too gory, but still I don't want to risk it. 
Your goal is to get 150 points, two for kills, one for assists. Once you're done, you complete a short obby, and then you get the badge. Now, I liked the combat in this game, however, 150 points, which is like two per kill, is a bit too much considering how you constantly die. If it was maybe like 60 points, I would have enjoyed it better, however, it just feels a bit too stretched out. I still kind of like it though, so I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. Nah, I'm kidding, I'm gonna review this one too even though I skipped it. I mean, the quest looks nice with like the contrast between the retro players and the normal players, however at the same time it's just kill 11 Roblox players that look retro with other people specifically maybe being able to steal kills, I'm unsure. Either way, the game looks pretty cool and the ending animation looks kinda nice, so I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. I mean, not, not from my experience, I'm just guessing here, but good job. And after 26 hours, we are now only 9 badges away from finishing the hunt. I'm not gonna give a recap of my opinions, I'll just save all of them until the end, but just know that all of my past opinions still stand about this. One hour into the video, we're finally going to end things right here, right now. It's time for the final stretch. Three Thousand Eight is a game about exploring an abandoned IKEA, or I don't know, a haunted IKEA, whatever and surviving against the anomalous entities that plague the building. Your specific task here is to complete three randomly generated tasks. I luckily got good ones, so I didn't have to suffer too much, but I heard that others got really bad ones. This game was pretty boring while waiting for daytime to come to claim the rewards, so I'm giving this one a 4 out of 10 for laziness for only having just random objectives. Obby, but you're on a bike's quest sucks so badly! Not only do you have to complete World 1 in under 13 minutes, win a race, and complete World 4, all of which takes around 45 minutes in total. You don't even have to do the first two I mentioned, because you can just skip right to the third one and get it for free! That is, if you can even do that, because the game is so pay to win that you can't even do the first two without spending Robux! The footage is at like 70 times speed! 1 out of 10, I hate all of the developers who worked on this garbage. Hide and seek is mo the most boring gameplay ever conceived, all you have to do is pick a hiding place and pray that the seeker doesn't find you, because if the seeker does find you, then you won't progress towards winning this badge. 3 out of 10, it takes 7 minutes for one round with one seeker. Deadly Decisions is a quote-unquote horror-based quiz game. It's a 50-50 chance to get the hunt game mode or not, too. If you don't know the answer, just go with what the majority picks, but don't take too long, because if you take too long, then you die. The questions were fine, but other than that, it's just a pretty generic quiz game. 5 out of 10, not that good, not that bad. Sword Burst 3 just feels exactly the same as World Zero, so I'm not even going to bother trying to give it a detailed explanation, and just give it the exact same rating I gave World Zero, which is a 4 out of 10. Steep Steps was regarded as one of the hardest ones in this entire event. Being a rage physics-based ladder climbing platformer, your goal is to reach 100 meters to collect all of the items. Unfortunately, dropping your lot ladder to the floor means you gotta pay Robux to get it back or restart. Luckily, if it falls in the void, you can just get it back. I've heard that other people can grief you, however the partner that I had was pretty friendly and decided to help me out until the end, which was how I got this badge. 7 out of 10, it was challenging but fair. The survival game was fine, it was kind of like Minecraft but different. Once you get like the second tier of a weapon you could just go to the tyrant guy and fight him. Once you do, you get the badge. The game does what it's supposed to and it's fine enough so I'll go ahead and give it a 5 out of 10 for trying. Emergency Hamburg was, uh... If you did so much as get hit by a car, you are incapacitated for three minutes. Your goal is to complete a truck delivery with a yellow difficulty or higher. I did not know this and completed a green difficulty and did not get it. 
it's not much. All you gotta do is just go to two specific locations. I like the atmosphere, so it's fine. Five out of ten. <sighs> Before we go over the final game, let's go over the ones I skipped. I skipped Piggy because I knew that all of Piggy's quests were unnecessarily complex. This one looks quite complex, but I heard that it's fine if people have already completed most of it by the time you get in the server. I actually think this is something really cool, so I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I skipped the Mimic because it just felt like a horror simulator. Each egg gives around like 10 gold and you need 100 eggs in total in order to actually get the badge. Plus, I don't really like horror games and there's a big scary monster chasing you. It just felt long, scary, and unnecessarily tense, so I skipped it. It does look cool though, so in pity, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 because I know that these developers did well. I skipped slap battles because the quest needed to do it was stupidly long and hard. It took my friend an hour and 20 minutes. Did I mention that literally anyone can screw you over when you're trying to do the quest in this mode? Yeah, not really fun. I give it a 4 out of 10 due to you literally not being able to prevent people from griefing you because I'm unsure if you can do it in private servers. Shindo Life looked fine, however it was stupidly hard to find all the eggs and nobody in my server could do it, so I just left and skipped it because I just didn't know if it was good or not. The map looks kinda cool though and the enemy is unique with it actually having voice lines, so I'm going ahead and give it a 5 out of 10 because of that. I skipped a wolf or other because I thought it was a long drawn out social deduction game, not to mention that only one egg could spawn per match and I thought that like, you know, I had to survive all that time with the egg in hand. One egg still spawned per match and I didn't want to have to go find through private servers just to go ahead and try and get the egg so I skipped it. It looks fine enough though so I'm going ahead and give it a 5 out of 10. And now for one last game. You are presented with five riddles in Murderers vs. Sheriff's Duel, each one having their own requirement to unlock. After winning a 1v1, a 2v2, finding a trophy from someone's body, finding another trophy in the map, and winning a match, we can finally end our adventure. Oh yeah, by the way, I give it a 6 out of 10 because it was pretty decent. After so many trials and so many tribulations, we can finally claim our crowns. And it looks absolutely sick! Before we end off the video, and by extension the season, I'd like to give a few remarks about the hunt as a whole. This event is an experiment. It always has been, and it always will be. This is simply Roblox's first step into a brand new line of events that will shape Roblox forever. However, this version of the hunt wasn't very well thought out. All of the developers were given barely any time to create something, and most of them flat out couldn't create anything unique at all. It's sad to me how a bunch of developers get one shot at this and they can't prove themselves and everyone thinks the game itself is just bad. Because I know that every single person who participates in this wants to be successful and wants to make a good product. Well, most of them. But along the way, everyone learns something. Roblox learned that you might not want to put so many games in one event. And everyone learned more stuff about coding, more stuff about design, more stuff about everything. They even got a brand new player base with some players choosing to stick around and maybe even give them more players to come. Everyone wins! What I'm trying to say is, maybe the hunt wasn't such a failure after all. Despite all the torture everyone went through to get those crowns, all of it was worth it in the end. 
I myself have been bored out of my mind with simulators for the past few months, and to finally get something new was so refreshing to me. In my opinion, The Hunt isn't a failure. It's a learning experience. Two weeks of fun, they said, would happen, and two weeks of fun I got. Well, really, just one extended day. But after all of that, everything, I'm tired. I've spent so long on this event, so long making this video, that I just want to take a nap, I guess. Before I go, however, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for watching Starism Season 1. It was a pleasure to make every single video and to make every single one of you smile. But I have more projects besides YouTube. I have Starcade. I have other things that I want to do. I have a life. But I'm still proud to have YouTube as my hobby. So for one more time this season, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.